I'd like to present 10 arguments uh, or 10 reasons to doubt the decline of the United States uh, in a moment of apparent economic, cultural pandemic crisis. I think it's important to remember some of the enduring strengths that America still enjoys and is likely to continue to enjoy. Uh, number one, America is a nation uh, and it's grown powerful by asserting its nationhood, not by pooling its sovereignty. And it's a nation to which all Americans and particularly immigrants sign up to. It represents a legal contract with an efficiency and a sense of shared loyalty and community, which has been difficult, if not impossible, to replicate in other ideological experiments. Its nationalism helps it rather than uh, hinders it. It's an experiment. It's a political science experiment constructed by framers 24 plus decades ago on a science of politics. And it says that if you structure a constitution and a government in such a way, you will protect unalienable rights. It's a machine that will go of itself. And that experiment has been terrifically successful, certainly in relative terms. America has gone from being insignificant two and a half centuries ago to being the most powerful nation measured on any number of different metrics in the history of the world. There's something to do with the science of its politics that's made that happen. America enjoys the benefits of a benign neighborhood. It has friendly neighbors north and south. Every other contender for ideological global power, think of Russia and think of China particularly, um, are undone, compromised by bad neighborhoods with neighbors that don't quite trust them. Whereas America uh, is, has, a, has a f almost a free security um, to think in global terms. It's an unpopular, unfashionable argument, but it's one we have to deal with, that the United States still has distinct advantages born of the fact that it was colonized by the British. It has the English language, the language of trade, uh, a, a, an understanding of property rights, of religious freedom, um, and these endure. And they, they were not easily replicated in the other ideological experiments. Think of Russia, think of China, think of Germany. Um, so it, that, that legacy uh, it endures. It is the most religiously free nation in the history of the world. There are more religions practiced more freely in Los Angeles than, the, than there are in any other city or nation in the world. Uh, and this gives, an America, a, gives Americans a distinct advantage. It gives them uh, a, a nation of community, of empathy, of shared values. This uh, degree of religiosity is unmatched in other, in fact, you have to go to the Muslim world to, to find comparable levels of religiosity. And uh, in an America's case, the great utility that comes with them. Of course, America has conflict, racial, economic, cultural, it does not have religious war. It's not part of its history. Uh, there is no Bosnia, Belfast, uh, Baghdad uh, in, the, in American history, the equivalents in American history. It's remade by immigrants that choose to go there, by and large. People see themselves in the United States. In a way, let me suggest that they don't see themselves in China. America gives out something like a million green cards every year. China gives out uh, a handful. There is an attraction um, that the United States has, which draws in immigrants. Uh, and that, that attraction will endure whether America is on the rise or in decline. The declinism is as old as the na nation itself. That those people that hope for America to go into a decline have been wrong for at least two and a half centuries. From the uh, elites of Europe um, in the late 18th century to uh, Beijing and Paris and Moscow today, the expectation that America would eventually fall because it's a nation of backwoodsmen, uh, uh, it's too democratic and too free, they've all been exposed as, as, as faulty predictions. Uh, 
Um, declinism is an exaggeration, um, which is yet to be proved right. Its military power remains preeminent. It's the most powerful military machine in the history of the world. It has the capacity to project its power through military means unmatched by any rival. And it spends prodigiously on research and development to maintain this, this, uh, this gap, this edge. What will you balance it with? Uh, if, if the replacing or negating American power is your ambition, uh, who are the states that you will join? One of the most remarkable features of, the cont of contemporary global politics is that there isn't a balancing coalition against American power. Realists, a dominant strain in international relations history, will confidently predict that all great power portends or creates balancing uh, power, but we don't see it. The states that are invested in uh, a decline of US power, whose politics are defined by their anti-Americanism, are insignificant. Venezuela, Cuba, uh, Iran, Syria, um, North Korea. If this is the balancing coalition against the United States, America has a long way to run. And number 10, what will you replace it with? Which current state in the world or transnational entity is uh, poised to replace American power? Not the EU. Um, China has much more interest in maintaining its internal cohesion than it has ambitions to become the global pacifier of choice. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's still the indispensable nation that other nations often have the need of. Uh, given that need, and the absence of powers willing to replace it, uh, let me suggest America has some considerable distance to run. Thank you.